community to protect the Palestinian people. Let's bring in Rami Khouri, who's the director of global engagement at the American University of Beirut and a senior fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School. He's joining us from Boston. Welcome back to Al Jazeera. Uh, we're just hearing, Rami Khouri, that the political security cabinet will be meeting tonight, the Israelis, that is, uh, to, uh, to approve the continuation of what they're calling this operation. And a political uh, official has said it go its goals have not yet been achieved. What are its goals? Uh, I don't think the Israelis actually know that. You know, Zionism and the state of Israel for about the last hundred years <clears throat> have confronted the Palestinian national identity and the uh, need for Arab uh, rights in Palestine and other places. And they've only been able to really, the Israelis have only been able to use violence uh, and now recently colonial expansion and settlements <clears throat> against the Palestinians. And they've done this many, many times. What's fascinating is they keep attacking Gaza. Before that, they used to attack Lebanon. And, and they keep attacking in uh, Palestinian and other places in Syria once in a while. <clears throat> and they don't seem to have a clear strategic goal other than to show that they have a lot of military capabilities the tremendous irony and the cruel irony for Israelis and, and Jews and Zionists who support Israel <clears throat> is that every time over the last, I would say, 50 or 60 years that the Israelis and Zionists have used military force in a strong way and now including sieges and mass arrests against Palestinians, it only reinforces the determination of Palestinians across the board to resist politically and in some cases like Islam Jihad militarily. And this is exactly <clears throat> what is going on now. <clears throat> so we're, we're seeing a replay in every dimension of this. The first provocation from Israel, the first attacks, the retaliation, the uh, expansion of tensions. Uh, there may be more tomorrow if the Israeli government, as apparently it said, is going to allow some extremist Israeli groups to go up onto the Haram al-Sharif, the Temple Mount. <clears throat> so this is going to continue to happen over and over and over again. And after every round, what's what's incredible is that after every round, whether it's with Hamas in Palestine or Islamic Jihad or Hezbollah in Lebanon or other places, the resistance gets more technologically sophisticated and develops more public support. And that's what we're seeing in inside the uh, Palestinian Islamist groups, Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Palestine, broadly within the Palestinian movement and broadly within the Arab region. So How far is Islamic Jihad willing to go at this point? And, you know, the Israel says that it's targeting Islamic Jihad, but we've seen them target uh, civilian buildings in Gaza. They've killed a, a five-year-old child. Why are they targeting, supposedly, Islamic Jihad at this point? Well, they claim that they have uh, threats that are clear, that Islamic Jihad is going to launch terror attacks. And therefore, they have to preemptively stop this. They've been saying this for 50, 60 years. It's quite extraordinary. And the world puts up with it. And some of the political leaders in, in the U.S. and uh, Canada and England and other places say, take reflects in a Pavlovian way. They say, oh, the Israelis have a right to defend themselves. Of course, everybody has a right to defend themselves, including the Palestinians. The best defense is a peace agreement. The Arabs have offered a peace agreement to the Israelis, and the Israelis won't even uh, discuss it. So. The Israelis keep coming up with very effective propaganda uh, and deception techniques that work around the world, especially with uh, pretty ignorant politicians. But they don't work really all the time anymore because you see now all over the world, in Europe and the United States, there's a huge movement, especially among young Jews, demanding equal rights, that Palestinians and Israelis should live in their own state peacefully next to each other and to stop this colonization and, and apartheid uh, by the Israeli government. Right. But the, the governments have, have never, the governments of Israel have never been able to come up with a strategy to do that. And, and every time there's an election, as there's going to be now soon in Israel, they launch an attack on Gaza. What is Hamas's strategy at this point? What is Hamas's calculation in not joining in so far as we know at this point? Hamas is caught in a really difficult bind because they are uh, the ruling authority in Gaza. Uh, initially, they were elected, and then they just took over and kicked out Fatah. Uh, so they have responsibility to let people try to live a normal life in Gaza. But at the same time, they push themselves forward as the Islamist uh, revolution. Uh, Hamas uh, means Harakal al-Muqawam al-Islami, the Islamic resistance movement. They 
uh, are trying to find the balance between resistance, military or political or whatever, and governing. And they haven't done a very good job of either. Uh, this is why Islamic Jihad has gotten more popularity, because Islamic Jihad only says military force is the only thing that's going to uh, push the Israelis one day to either come up with an agreement or find some other mechanism whereby this conflict uh, ends. Right. Uh, so Hamad really caught in a bind, and so are all the Arab leaderships, by the way. And this is something that has been going on for uh, probably since the 1960s, uh, way before Hamas and Hezbollah were created, by the way, but when you had the Palestinian guerrilla groups, uh, the, <clears throat> the leftist uh, militant groups in the 60s and 70s, right. uh, and then in the 80s. So this is, uh, none of this is new. Okay, thank you so much, Rami Khoury, for speaking to us from Boston.